That's not the way to treat a horse. No, senor. The first law which regulated human treatment towards animals was voted in the British Parliament on the 22nd of July 1822. This was known as the Cruel Treatment of Cattle Act and it was passed down thanks to several years of effort on behalf of the Irish politician and fighter for animal rights Richard Martin. In the document which is often called Martin's Law it states that if a person brutally beats, uses or causes disease to a horse, donkey, mule bull, sheep or other livestock who have to pay a sum no greater than five pounds and not less than ten shillings. If he refuses, he will be sentenced to not longer than three months of prison. In the same year, the first trial for the torture of a donkey was conducted, and this process was perpetuated in a comic matter by Charles Hunt. Richard Martin had a reputation as a kindly man who loved animals very much, and therefore he got the nickname Humanity Dick. Once he challenged a punk who had killed a dog to a duel, which included pistols. In the duel, they were both wounded. When he got asked once why he defends animals, he replied, Sir, the sheep cannot hold a gun. He was one of the leaders of the first World Societies for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, which was established in 1824 in London in a bar called The Old Butcher. Martin had a farm the size of 9,000 arches on which he hunted in his spare time. As some of the influential members of Martin's association were also hunters, it is not a surprise that his work did not extend to the protection of wild animals. Martin had to escape to France after being accused of secretly threatening people during the election. His goal to a law aimed at banning animal fights was realized a year after his death in 1835. Today, it is unthinkable that the tradition of animal baiting was for many centuries one of the most popular types of entertainment in Europe. The most frequent participants in this cruel entertainment were specially bred fighting dogs who in specially constructed play areas for that purpose, like small arenas, fought against wild animals. In old illustrations of that time, we can see that the rival of these dogs in the fights could have been a bear, badger, monkey, group of rats or even a man. The arenas were filled with the audience composed of gentlemen who cheered loudly and these playgrounds had the biggest profit from betting on who was to be the winner of the battle. Included in the long forgotten bloody sports was also the popular cock throwing which was a pastime for all social classes in England until the end of the 18th century. The poor rooster was tightly tied to a post and people took turns at throwing cockstills, specially weighted sticks, at him until he was targeted to death. Examples of brutal plays with animals are visible even in the Austrian monarchy. In Vienna, during the 17th and 18th century, there were four public courts where this type of entertainment was held. The most famous arena, named Hetz Theatre, welcomed 3,000 visitors. Performances were regularly held every Sunday and during holidays, and all tickets were sold out in advance. The theatre program consisted of bulls, lions, bears, bisons, wolves and deers fighting against the so-called Hetzmeisters and their sanguinary dogs. The arena was destroyed in a fire in 1786, and Emperor Franz II banned the rebuilding. The first and most significant protest against the cruel treatment of animals was carried out by the English artist William Hogarth when he published a famous series of graphics entitled The Four Stages of Cruelty in 1751. On the graphics in this book, the tragic fate of Tom Nero is shown, who is taught from an early age to harm weaker than himself. In the beginning, this is carried out on innocent animals in order to train cruelty and obduracy, ending with Tom Nero being sentenced to death by hanging for committing murder. Hogarth is considered a father of modern caricature and his satirical works were full of moral messages that have not lost their importance. <laughs>